founder and producer of about 70 works in different forms, a recipient of over 60 international awards, including an Academy Award nomination, educator with a notable history, teaching at NYU, Cornell, Yale, among others, awarded Best Cinematographer at Sundance Film Festival. Christine, if you could define yourself using one word, what would it be? Crazy. Why? Because crazy is connotation, it can be interpreted as really bad. Could be crazy about something. I'm crazy about Apple. I'm crazy about this person. Could be very healthy. So you can interpret it depends on how you look at the matter. Christine Choi grew up in Shanghai's elegant French Quarter and came to the U.S. when she was only 14 years old to attend a Catholic school. Christine then attended Columbia University, where she was trained as an architect, having received her Master's of Science. But shortly after graduating, she took an abrupt turn and moved to Los Angeles, where she studied the art of directing films at the American Film Institute and where she realized that filmmaking was her true passion. So you came here to the U.S. when you were 14 with a one-way ticket. What was your first impression? Rock and roll. <laughs> I didn't know who, 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 who were Beatles or the you know, Rolling Stones. I had no clue. Yeah? That was interesting. And then uh, my image of the United States is, you know, from the movie. You mm -hmm. know? Everybody's white, everybody's blonde, blue eyes. <laughs> So it was such a shock to see African-Americans, Latinos, and Asian-Americans. And at that time, Asian-Americans were very, very few. When you first moved here, you didn't have a lot of money, right? You came with $65. $60. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Looking back, what were some of the most difficult things that you went through? One incident, I'll never forget. Because at that time, we were using draft, drafting board. Mm -hmm. So you have to sit under those high stools. Yeah. And I'm skinny, so I usually have a cushion on the high stool. And those asshole boys, they put a water balloon underneath the cushion. No. And I sat down, the water balloon splashed all over the place, and the entire <sighs> class laughed the ass off, okay? Ah, uh, so bullies. Mad. Then I went to Princeton for a while, and the guys were saying, what are you, a dyke? What are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> we don't like you. Oh, my God. Yeah. And it was pretty tough. And because it was really tough, and I worked really, really hard. Then I fell yeah. in love, you know, with the, this Jewish guy and got pregnant. Uh -huh. So he said, let's have a baby. I said, sure, let's have a baby. Just had a baby. <laughs> I, even, I didn't even know what the baby coming out of. I thought it's coming out of the <laughs> stomach. You know, I had no clue. And he came with a boy. Mm -hmm. So by the time I was 20, I had two kids. Oh, wow. And I was not the greatest mother. I just <laughs> tell them to shut up all the time. <laughs> And fortunately, at that time, American Film Institute mm -hmm. was trying to get federal grant. Yeah. But they looked around their campus. Oops, there was no woman, uh -huh. no minority. So they actually invited me. Oh, to they apply. invited you? Apply. I thought that you were actually, you know, like you just made up your mind. I was actually no, going to no, no. ask you I that. I was what invited. Made you? I had no, uh, no idea what was the background story. Okay. So I ended up in Los Angeles, which I hated, you know. Why? Everybody wears baby pink, baby blue. Everybody's blonde, right? Everybody's blonde. Everybody's <laughs> so insecure. <laughs> yeah. It was a fun, you know, dabbling with the camera. And I was trained as more narrative film, mm -hmm. rather than a documentary, you know. Yeah. Uh, before the American Film Institute, I already made a few short films about women in prison and some, some oh, yeah. wacko, wacko, you know, stories. Those days, it was really easy. You go to prison and just say, hi, I'm here to make a movie. And the really? warden said, welcome. <laughs> And nowadays they have a hard time like making no, no, any no. sort of documentary welcome. about the prison system. Just say welcome because we don't look very vulnerable. Right? Yeah. I made a film called Inside Woman Inside about women in the maximum security on the death row. The death row, yeah. Wow. Yeah. They, they didn't even know how to operate a camera. Shooting big, you know, 16 millimeter film. So those were like one of your first films. And then I made a film, it's called Teach Your Children about why so many African-American or Latino male in prison mm -hmm. with a woman named Susan Robeson 
whose grandfather is very famous, Paul Robeson, he used to be a singer and actor, Othello, and etc. Yeah. yeah. And in 72, you became a part of Newsreel, which afterwards became... And I'll be founder of uh, the World Newsreel. Right? Yeah, and it was one of the very first independent political filmmaking organizations it's here in exist. New York. Yeah. And how was it in the beginning? How was it being one of the few Asian women, you know, to be a part the of it? The whole Newsreel. Yeah. I got to tell you the background. Newsreel was established in 1968 mm -hmm. by a bunch of very wealthy trust fund babies yeah. in America. they against racism. they against the Vietnam War. Mm -hmm. So when they inherit the money from their parents by the time you're 18 or 21, I don't know the, the, the inheritance law, yeah. they donated the money to this organization called Newsreel. So the parents write off, they write off taxes. Mm -hmm. It's a scam, you know. The, yeah tax shelter. With the money, they begin to make films. The films are anti-capitalism, anti-racism, uh, 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 anti-sexism, anti-Hollywood, anti-television, anti-Vietnamese, anti-everything, anti okay? <laughs> but soon, I think the Vietnam War was over and they lost the interest. I inherited it this particular organization, I changed the name to a third world newsreel. Mm -hmm. And I was looking at these documents, you know, incorporation. None of those board of trustees actually exist. Oh my God. They are fake names. <laughs> it, you know, but if it, they're okay because they were not applying grants. Mm -hmm. So I reorganized having, a, you know, board, board directors and et cetera, make more legitimate. Yeah. instead of a, like a tax shelter. And that started but I also made some very crazy decision. Whatever, whoever made the film Third World Newsreel, the copyright belongs to the Third World Newsreel. Oh, cool. So I don't have any incomes. I made a crazy decision. I don't know why, because it's somehow like more collectivism, you know, <laughs> not in competition with each other. Mm -hmm. Early Newsreel film didn't even have a credit. It's just a machine gun. Da, 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 da. And Third World News Drill was the first, first organization to start experiment with the color, yeah. you know, color films rather than black and white. Wow. And I stayed there for about 10 years. And then um, I left and started another organization, nonprofit organization called Film News Now Foundation, which mm -hmm. still exists. And I started getting grants, making films, and et cetera, you know. And then one day I looked at it, I oops, I have a no income. Uh, I'm poor. I have two kids. How am I going to send them to college? <laughs> and someone says, listen, if you're a college professor, the kids go for free. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Great. And that was the time I was just got nominated for an Oscar. Uh -huh. So, university. So tell me about that. Tell me how did it feel to be nominated for an Oscar? I tell you honestly, the worst thing happened to me in my life is get nominated for an Oscar. Yeah. Worst thing, because I became somebody else. I was no longer Christine Choi. I thought I was smarter. Phones started ringing. People like you want to interview me. <laughs> Zillions of people, magazine, da 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 da. Your ego pumped up, mm -hmm. really pumped up. And why? Because all of a sudden you are in the spotlight. You are object. You are not a human being. Yeah. And I tell that to my young, my, my students. It's, it's hard to say it, but it's the worst thing happened to you when you are not completely mature mentally and not ready in the kind of a stage, you know. If I was today much more mature person, understand how social dynamic works, then be nominated for an Oscar, I would embrace it very different attitudes rather than thinking I'm... Let it go to your head, right? That's right. Absolutely. Despite educating herself in all aspects of filmmaking, Christine Choi decided the documentary filmmaking was her preference because it gave her more freedom and ease. But Christine also uses film as a political and humanist tool to touch historical records and social issues. At the same time, she's content in her position as an educator at the New York University, 
where she's able to positively influence upcoming documentary filmmakers. Documentary filmmaking is your medium of choice. It, mm. you know, not, not really medium choice. I like no? awful, awful film but because I got two kids. And when you do a narrative film, first of all, you have a very good. You should have a good script. Yeah. Then you have to go location scouting. Then you have to do casting. Then you allow to shoot forty-five days on location. A lot more of high maintenance. Right? It was impossible for me. Yeah. You know, physically impossible when I had two kids. So documentary, in some way, it was much easier for me to control time. You know, my crews are usually very small, four yeah. or five people. My shooting ratios, you don't believe it. One to one to five maximum. Really? Sometimes nice. one to two. So you do a lot of pre-production. So when you're on location, you can bang, 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 bang yeah. out. You know. Whereas a feature film, you invest so much time, so many money, so much money, and if it's, if it's a flop, it's very, very disappointing. Yeah. Well, I've seen people you know cannot get back on the track because you're not going to get investment. You're not getting investors. Yeah. And with documentaries, film. you can kind of pick up where you left off as well, right? So yeah. you don't have to worry so much. But why do you think that documentaries can be so powerful, even though they're not, you know, precisely popular among the crowds? I think it, um, Michael Morley really did a good job changing the perception of the documentary, mm -hmm. you know, and the Barbara Capo, you know, some of the uh, filmmakers in the early Mars. Because documentary, usually people, the idea is it's education, yeah. it's information which is came from worst aspect of a TV, television, okay? Mm -hmm. Like television journalism, yeah. it's news, it's a reportage, doesn't have any entertainment value. Mm -hmm. You don't use the music, you know? Yeah. You don't use it, you know, like a, 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 a black comedy, you know? And so it's very much all, almost like an illustrative PowerPoint. Gave a, people a very, very bad impression but later on, such as Michael Moore in Barbara, made documentary much more accessible to the population. There's and entertaining sense, too, right? There's a sense of a humor, sense yeah. of a, you know, uh, uh, sarcasm, sense of, uh, uh, yeah. And I learned a great deal from them, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that that changed the nature of documentary a lot, you know. Also, documentary is better, um, uh, uh, to me, it's a better way of looking back the history because it's really documenting real people, real situation, I mean, unlike the reality show. And that will give uh, a person a wider, wider scope to understand different culture, different expression, different, uh, 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 you know, uh, 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 many different subject matter, for instance. Yeah. I mean, I recently I just saw a film which is really, really good called Ivory Tower. Talk about how expensive the college edu education is becoming. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the president's getting a lot of money. They're building a lot of am the amenity, like a football, the, the, the gymnasiums, swimming pool to learn, you know, the students coming. And you're allowed to drink a beer in the campus. So the escalation of the, the, the tuition is ridiculous. Yeah. And the, the way in which if it's the, 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 where the student receive a quality education is not being discussed. Mm -hmm. So things like that, I'm being working in the NYU as a professor, it just opened up my mind. I didn't know the university, the behind scene of the, how university yeah. operates. So I learned a great deal, great, great deal, you know, and that's when I, think, you know, next semester we're able to share with the students and generate a much more healthy dialogue because they are the victims of the system. You know? Absolutely. If you could give your students or other people who look up to you one piece of advice, what would it be? First of all, filmmaking is one of the few art forms that directly ties into commerce. Yeah. So. Sometimes, if you don't have the money, it's very difficult to make film because you have to pay the laborers, you have to get the equipment, you know, et cetera, and you travel. And, uh, so you have to be a little savvy in terms of business, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, one thing I hate to 
have people ask me, who are your audience? You know? yeah. <laughs> never know your audience. You know? And some audience you have to develop. You yeah. know? Like never, a lot of people didn't know Facebook, Twitter, mm -hmm. you know? And they begin to, with the technology, they were able to develop a whole new audience. Yeah. Right now, the YouTubes, and the Netflix, and et cetera. But you do have to have some understanding of uh, the market. Okay? It's still a commodity. It's a yeah. product. You know, it's not something you just get, like an oil painting. You know, you just hang on to your appreciated by your own your, yourself. You yeah. have to have uh, this market. So that's one. Secondly, you have to have uh, some talent. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, especially a cinematographer. I can never teach cinematography. You're born with it. You're born with a yeah. particular sensitivity in your eyes, how you look at it, the color scheme, the composition, etc. Yeah. It's impossible. Just like a musician, you cannot give them a new pair of ears. You can do a lot of hard work, yeah. but this innate creativity, you have to born with it. Absolutely. How can you teach that? It's very difficult. Hard working is extremely important, you know, discipline, and be on time, uh, and respect other other crafts, you know, respect each other, it's very important. Sometimes the director is whole, or the producer is ridiculous, you know, sexist or whatever. Yeah. You had to be able to swallow a lot of pride and not having a confrontation in front of the people. Always having discussion outside of the group because it is a collective effort, you know, outside because everybody has their, their own pride. You, yeah. know, you don't blow up in front of people, you know. And being a woman, it's tough. It's because really you're, the prime age is around late 20s, early 30s. Mm -hmm. After you accumulated enough experience, uh, seen a lot, I've done a, quite a bit, different kind of production, but it's also da 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 da, it's time to have a baby. Yeah. It's tough. Once you have a day baby, you just cannot pick it up the rig and move. You know? So the decision has to make uh, 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 by yourself. It's not a decision you can make with your husband or your parents. Absolutely. Many, many DPs, directors, photography, mm -hmm. none of them married, none of them have children. Yeah. None. So my situation was by accident. I had the children early. And then I gave me a, a period of time to improve my craft. Mm -hmm. Then 19 years later, then I have another baby. But 19 years gave me plenty of time to produce and direct or you know, shoot a lot of films. Christine Choi is most involved with issues relating to Asian Americans and women, a direct reflection of herself and her own heritage. While she may not make a lot of money with her films, she aims to address injustice. She wants past incidents and events to be remembered, but also confronted. With positive objectives and progress in mind, Christine has built a prolific and multi-award winning career. I was really, really pissed off at America's mass media, not being inclusive, excluding women of women, excluding people of color, excluding poor people, excluding disabled people, excluding aging people. It just, just was a very much a stereotype, you know, mm -hmm. of good luck, yeah. Yeah, et cetera, right? And, you know, of course, the gays and lesbians, they, they don't even want to have anything to do with it. So making spite to spindles, when I began to do research, I realized somebody got to start it. I mean, you can bitching about it. This is stereotype. This is an exclusive, you know. Yeah. You are not in, in, including me in the club. But you can complain, complain rest of your life. If you don't but do if anything, you don't, If yeah. you don't have the alternative, what's the point? You just yeah. become more, more, more angry. Yeah. So one of the reasons I got into this is this. Okay, I'm not interested in making money. At least my next generation have a retrospective. They can look at it. What happened to Asian Americans at large? Mm -hmm. You know, what happened to the Chinese? I, I don't even like the Asian American term because which yeah. is stupid. You know, it's so general. It's like a Latino. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, 
you know, there's so many different countries, you know, to speak a different language, different mm -hmm. culture, background, different history, different geology, I blah, 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 you know, you lump them all together. Yeah. But, so now, today's new young, younger generation is interesting. They don't say that they're Asian Americans. They say, I'm Chinese American. Yeah. I'm a Korean American. I'm Mongolian American. And yeah. it's really different too. Yeah. You know, they shouldn't be in the same category. It's because not right. this country was built on a racism. They, don't, yeah. they, don't, they never know how to solve the racism. And so by having this group, separate group, you know, as if it's, 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 a, it's an answer for the racism. Now, yeah. if I'm president, our mandatory forcing every single American interracial, inter, marriage interracially, so they have the kids are not pure. <laughs> Hybrid kids, <laughs> they're the most then, beautiful too. <laughs> then the racism will be solved. There's no I other way. I completely agree. There is absolutely no other way. They slaughter all the Indians, blah, 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 you know, put all the an African and Latino male, young men in the prison for smoking a joint. And, crazy you know it's ridiculous it really is and it's you know there's so many bigger issues out there but you've done so much you broke so many boundaries for women especially what are some other things that you think women still need to do mass media constantly promoting what is beauty what is not beauty so women and themselves what is success what is not success it's all measured by the mass media you have lots of money that doesn't mean you feel good about yourself, you are happy about what you're doing. So you're always looking at what other people are doing, which creates incredible alienation within yourself because you always compare with others, you know. And I think that those things are that, that we, we have to really overcome, really. Absolutely. But you cannot live in a vacuum. You're constantly bombarded with the, you know, movies and, you know, et cetera. I mean, I get, you know, I look at it, you know, I don't want the wrinkles in my face, so <laughs> you go to go buy creams. Why? Mm -hmm. I mean, you're aging. It's, it's natural process, but we don't like that because the society says that is not correct. It's so true, and then women just, you know, compete against other women when they should be together, you know, because there's so many bigger issues to look at still, I feel like. Very difficult, very, very difficult, you know. Mm. Maybe when we have a woman president, it will help. Maybe, yeah. You never tell know. Me, tell me a little bit about in 97 when you were awarded Best Cinematographer by Sundance. How did it feel? That's, you know, another groundbreaking thing. I, I had a big fight with the producer. Yeah? So when I won, I was so happy. <laughs> Suck it back. <laughs> <laughs> but I was very polite. Yeah. She called me up, said she won. I didn't go. So, you know, there's some money in that. She said, do you want to split money? I said, hell no. <laughs> Is there one message, one general message that you try to send out with everything that you do, with every piece you work on, or does it change? I think everyone has a great story to tell. And pretty soon the world will be very different. Family history is important. Personal history is important. Collective consciousness is important. World is changing very rapidly. And we are no longer just contained as a self. We have to have a much larger viewpoint to understand by posing more questions than rather than the answers.